Right. Thanks. Thanks, Drew, for the intro. I just um, am going to talk about weight management and energy because I think that really follows on. Thanks, Connie, for all your information. And I, I was really pleased that you actually itemized all those foods, you know, the things that you should eat and certainly the things that you shouldn't eat. Um, and I think some of us realize why we actually do need to detox when we, we hear the list of foods that we're supposed to be eating. Um, and it's true, Drew, what you were saying, even though it's a very short detox, that's, that's, the, that's the feature of it. In fact, I think that's part of its success is that it's a gentle detox and that we can repeat it. And that's why we give you a box of products that you can put away somewhere safe and take them out again, reestablish yourself and do them probably every three or four months. That's the intention of this detox. It's gentle enough to do that. And it just steers you back on track. And I think um, the reason why I've really specifically chosen also weight management and energy is because we've had such good feedback from um, people who have used the detox because we've had it for a few years now. And even though it is a short, short in duration, they feel lighter. They say they feel fresher. Many of them start actually feeling like they've lost some weight, whether it's just that they size or actually on the scale and definitely more energized. So I thought that those would be things to actually focus on or continue with. So, and as, as Connie said, we've got this great new microbiome. It's all reset and it now needs to be fed correctly. And we need to be able to respect it, but also achieve the goals that we want to do in terms of weight management and energy. And if we maintain the use of things like our probiotics on a regular basis too, we will always have our microbiome in a good condition. So, so let's launch in a bit and I'll explain to you what it is that I want to talk about in terms of these um, weight management and energy components. Yeah, so many of you, I'm sure it is a new year, even though we're in the second month already, you've had a chance to just catch your breath and now you really have to put your goals into, into action. And so many of you want to lose weight and some of you probably got some pretty bold plans. And others of you perhaps want to just maintain where you are, or perhaps just lose that little bit that you gained over the holiday season, and then manage yourself going forward. And managing going forward also means not regaining the weight that you've lost. That often is the biggest challenge. But I, I find often that a common mistake people make, particularly they've made this New Year resolution and those that are going to lose a, a large amount of weight, they try to change a whole lot of long-term ingrained habits all at once. And, you know, that's, that's a tall order. And it's, it's a very difficult thing to achieve or to sustain as well. Um, and sometimes sets us up to fail. So whether you're looking to lose a fair amount of weight, then we've got a, a weight loss program that you could that you embark on, which is very structured. And you can work from there in for a sort of 30-day pack and start at that point. Or if you're wanting, as I say, just to maintain and manage. I think in either case, though, when you're looking at the food component, we don't, you know, we're always challenged by what we're supposed to eat. And I think we all know the things we shouldn't be doing. And we know our downfall and the things that we, we could change. But I think a simple message really is to eat smaller portions. That's a place to start. Eat smaller portions of the things that you are eating. Yes, tweak the ones that you know really don't serve your purpose as well. But don't try to change too, too many things and make it too complicated. And then I think also what we've got to talk about is... Um, our body composition, because what happens typically is we jump on the scale, we get a fright or we delighted, or we know a number that we've got to work with. And yet what we don't know, that's how much we weigh. Yes, that's, that's, our, that's us sitting on the scale, that's what we weigh. But we know very little about how our body is made up, the body composition of, of, of our weight. In other words, what is our fat percentage? How much lean or muscle tissue do we actually have? Now that's not easy just to know by looking at somebody, um, or yourself even. And so, of course, you do get scales that will show you and give you information about how much, what fat percentage you have, so that you can actually get to understand where you are. And as you start to lose, are you losing fat or are you losing muscle tissue? So that is what body composition is. And it's important to, to recognize the fact that we are made of these different components and they affect our weight at the end of the day. And that the scale is only one measure. So, so don't don't rest all your, your expectations on the scale only. There are a whole lot of different ways we can look at our, at our long-term weight management, and that's what we're going to do a little bit this evening. And also, of course, just in terms of body composition, you, you know, you might have heard of TOFI, T-O-F-I, and that actually is thin on the outside, fat on the inside. 
So some people might look at, you know, as if they're in good shape, but in actual fact, they might be carrying quite a lot of body fat that they aren't aware that they're doing. So it's, it's quite a challenging area, but it's something we, we can change and we can work on. And I'm going to show you a bit about how to do that this evening. And then for, for long-term energy, obviously, as um, we all know, we want to be energized, but sometimes when we're taking in less calories or kilojoules, then we often don't have some of the energy, and that's exactly what we want to avoid. We want to make sure that we maintain um, our activity levels, that we contain our energy factors in our, in our lifestyle. But also very important in terms of energy. So when we're talking about energy, it's not just about bouncing up and down and having vitality. Energy is about the calories or kilojoules that we eat. Our food provides energy, and that's the terminology we're going to use tonight. I might use calories, I might use kilojoules, but they're, they're exactly the same thing. That is the amount of energy that a food will give. It's just simply got a different number value. And so we want to protect our lean muscle tissue. So remember the opposite of fat is lean. And when we talk about lean tissue, we're talking about muscles. And we want to burn fat. That is what we generally want to do. Do we always achieve it? We don't always know that, and we don't necessarily achieve it. So we want to kind of talk about body composition. I want to talk about energy in terms of how we feel, but also in terms of the calories and kilojoules that we eat. So I'll use those words interchangeably. Right, so we need to, to feed our, our microbiome, and we need to talk about some specific products that we can carry on in terms of our, from our detox until the next one. So I'm going to talk very simply about New Life Shape and Trianine this evening, because these are going to help us from an energy point of view, from a body composition point of view, from a weight loss point of view. Right, and then this is really where I'm going to focus our, 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 our attention this evening, was on, on creating a deficit, a calorie or, remember calories and kilojoules are the same thing, a calorie or kilojoule deficit to lose weight. And I think a way of looking at it that sort of struck me was about behavior, our behavior and our body's behavior. Now, our behavior is a choice we make. We decide to eat something or do something or not do it. And then our body behaves in response to that by design. It's designed to react to certain things in order for us to survive or for, for something to actually change or happen. So we'll talk a little bit about our behavior and how the body is designed to behave to things or respond to the things that we've actually thrown its way. And one of those things, of course, is if we are creating a calorie de deficit, in other words, taking in less calories or kilojoules, in other words, eating a little bit less food in order to lose weight, that's what most of us entertain as an idea to help us lose weight. Our body, that's our choice, that's our behavior, and our body is not going to respond in its behavior. It's going to say, okay, so there's less calories coming in or less kilojoules coming in. What am I going to do? What, is my, what am I designed to do as a body? Well, it's designed for us to survive. I think you'll agree in all the years that we've talked about nutrition and challenges of health and what have you, that our bodies are extremely accommodating. They, they try to make a plan when something isn't working well and really work for us in spite of the fact that we may not be working for them. And so in this case, when the body recognizes that the less calories or less kilojoules coming in or less energy from our food, it goes into survival behavior. And it says, well, then I better just slow down this body. I'll slow down the metabolism and we'll help the body to burn less calories inside the body. So what you're doing and all of us are doing as a weight loss program is we're taking in less calories because we want to create some sort of deficit. But we don't want our body to slow down on us. We actually want to burn calories inside the body so that we have an actual deficit, so that we can actually lose weight. But it's almost something we can't prevent. The metabolism is going to slow down because that's the body's behavior by design. Now, it's not easy to change it. Obviously, we would like to. We'd like to keep it the way it was, or we'd like to perhaps even increase it. So not easy to do, but it is possible to do it. So how do we do that? How do we take in less food? our choice and have the body respond in a positive way without slowing things down. Well, we have to increase our muscle mass or our lean tissue. Okay, remember this body composition? That's the answer to being able to keep our body more efficient and it will behave in a different way by design. 
we have to maintain this muscle tissue if we are eating less calories or if we are dieting. That's the way to deal with this metabolic change. Because the number or amount of calories or kilojoules that we burn is directly related to how much muscle we have. So said in another way, people who have more muscle burn more kilojoules or calories inside their bodies on any given day. So your metabolism is much more efficient if you have lean or muscle tissue as opposed to a whole lot of fats. Your composition is important. Okay, so that's, what, that's how we try to regulate our metabolism. It is possible, but how do we do that? Well, a crucial thing is we have to increase our protein intake to help achieve this body composition. It's a very important feature because when we've got protein, our body is much, much more efficient. When we've got muscle, even more so. We also, and you'll see from this little picture, we have to put in some effort in terms of working on that muscle mass. We have to incentivize it to tone, to develop. And don't switch off now and think, oh, well, this is not for me. I'm not into bodybuilding. It's not about bodybuilding. It's about putting a little bit of resistance exercise, putting a little bit of pressure on that muscle in order that it will turn or respond. So we want to create this deficit and we have to increase our muscle mass so that our body is efficient. So our metabolism hasn't let us down. Our body has simply responded because our muscle mass has increased and now by design, it will burn more calories. And just an interesting thing in terms of weight loss, because I think the biggest challenge is we, we decide we're going to lose some weight, we, we plan a whole thing. And what happens when we, we feel like we've achieved our goal, we stop doing what we did, and we slowly start to regain that weight. Now, this information that I'm using is scientifically proven. It's, and in fact, you know, we talked about the SAB, but one of our newest members, Dr. Todd Miller, this is his area of expertise, this is his passion. Um, you know, he's an academic, and he is constantly looking at this kind of muscle mass, calorie burn, met metabolic rate. This is his area of expertise. So a lot of this information I'm using is directly from his research. So this is, you've heard a lot about metabolism, you've heard about slowing down, you've heard about regaining weight, but this is actually scientific information that is very current, and that's something that he's shared with, um, with us fairly recently. And so he's saying, that a main, the main predictor of regaining your weight is related to how much muscle you have. It's almost a given that if your muscle mass is low, you will regain the weight you lost. And that is a common, common problem. It's a common disappointment. It's the reason why people keep changing from one program to another. So all this information that he's talking about, the metabolism, about muscle mass, and importantly, increasing your protein, is all coming from Dr. Todd Miller, who, as I say, is a, an academic, and this is his area of expertise. He's actually an associate professor at a university in, in Washington, D.C., and he follows this kind of information, and he's actually right there when they do the research. So think about it now. Where would you typically get all this protein that you need um, in order that you can actually increase the protein intake use it to burn, to burn your, um, your muscle and also to build your muscle and, of course, to um, increase your um, muscle mass and, and your metabolism. Well, proteins are made of a whole lot of amino acids, and some of those amino acids, which we call essential, the body cannot make, so we have to get them from our food. So we have to select foods that will have what we call essential amino acids. And that kind of gives some indication of the quality of a protein, too. But in our day-to-day -day food intake, foods that, we that will typically give us these essential amino acids are predominantly animal-based. So things like meat, chicken, dairy, cheese, eggs, they will give us good quality protein and give us all the essential amino acids. But of course, they also come along with a whole lot of other baggage. There's generally a lot of fat or some fat linked to them just by the way the food is designed. Obviously, you have to have some of that fat, not all bad, but of course, what it brings along with it is a whole lot of calories, which of course is what we're trying to reduce here. So it isn't always our preferred choice, although it's typically the choice people make because that's what's available to them. And interestingly, also about protein, how much do we need? You know, Dr. Todd Miller was also talking about it right now, in fact, in the nutrition scientific community. That the general thinking is, is that the recommendations for protein that we've been given 
for just your everyday staying alive and staying healthy. And then of course, slightly increased for exercise is actually not adequate. We've learned along the way that obviously infants and children for their growth activities need increased protein. We also then learned that in fact the elderly who we thought didn't really need much because they don't move around very much and you know their muscle mass isn't really a big deal. We found that they were very much inadequate in terms of their protein intake. So that has been published and accepted that the young ones, the elderly ones need extra protein. But what about the adults between those two areas of our life cycle? It seems that we're not actually being recommended to eat adequate amounts of protein. So often it gets dismissed, oh, you get enough from your diet. That is actually falling short just in general terms, let alone when we're actually wanting to do some exercise and have to increase our protein intake and improve our metabolism. So that's quite an interesting fact that if people are not actually getting adequate amounts of protein and the, and the choices that they can make aren't always as desirable as they should be. Right, so how do we get our protein? How are we gonna get this all that we actually need? Well, we have to drink it. And that is a very easy and effective way of getting it in without a lot of bulk, without a lot of fat. And in fact, um, this was Dr. Todd Miller's product of choice. Now, as I say, he's an academic, he's not a marketing man and doesn't put his name and face to a product just for the sake of it. But in fact, he was really blown away by the New Life Shake. So that's why I'm, I'm gonna go through it in a bit of detail in relation to this protein requirement, even though some of you are quite familiar with it. Because in this, it says protein shake, but in actual fact, it's for daily nutrition or for weight management. And it's a whole lot more than just a protein shake. And I'm going to show you why it's beneficial for our daily nutrition, but also for weight management. Okay, so it's got 18 grams of protein, which is quite a significant contribution to what our daily intake needs to be. But most important is that it has not just the essential amino acids, those nine that our body cannot make, it has 22 different amino acids. In other words, we haven't left anything to chance. Everything the body needs from protein nutritionally is in that protein component. And you know, scientifically, proteins can be scored, if you like. They, can, they get a score for how absorbable they are, how bioavailable they are, what sort of source you've used. And then you can rate a protein one against the other. And of course, Neolife Shake, as we've done with all our products, really, we, we, we subject them to a whole lot of scrutiny. Um, in the scientific community, independently, in fact, um, has, has been tested in this way and came out with flying colors. Not was it just excellent, it actually exceeded the level that was considered, you know, top of the top of the range, as it were. Um, so our protein score is, is very, very favorable and therefore very, very beneficial. So that's the protein component that we definitely need in terms of what we've been talking about, building up muscle mass um, whilst still creating calorie deficit. But there's, there are other things that are going to make up our normal plate of food. We have to eat, we're going to eat normally. Remember I said just reduce your portion sizes. And so people are going to eat carbohydrates or even a staple if you like. It's going to be on your plate one of the meals of the day in all communities. And what we have to be, be aware of in terms of behavior, again, remember I said whatever we give our body by choice, it will behave in some way or other by design, the way the body is designed to manage whatever it is you send its way. And so when we eat carbohydrates, commonly in this day and age, we eat carbohydrates that are quite refined, perhaps full of sugar, biscuits and cakes and what have you. And they go into the bloodstream very quickly and raise our blood sugar, in some cases, spike it. And so we get a response from our insulin because that's how the body works and tries to balance it out. So we get an insulin spike at the same time. And the, the disadvantage about an insulin spike or having a lot of insulin around is that it's actually, its message by design is to say, let's store. So it stores any surplus that we have because the body is not working effectively. And added to that, the body produces an enzyme that says to those fat cells, lock that door and don't open it. So you get a message of storage and you get a message of throw away the key. So the glycemic control is a process whereby you can actually choose or select the right or different types of carbohydrates that don't spike your sugar to such an extent, which in turn spikes your insulin. And so those are the very carbohydrates we've chosen in this product because this is a meal. Okay, this is for daily nutrition. And when you're on a weight management program, you still got to eat a meal. 
It just might be in a different form. So the carbohydrates that we've chosen in this product, we have specifically chosen so that they do not spike your sugar and do not spike your insulin. So you do not become a fat storing machine, but rather a fat using machine. And so that's a very important feature. And, and just as I said, we tested the scoring of the protein. Just be aware that our products are subject to scrutiny, as I say, in, in various activities and different publications. And we've proven that, in fact, when people take the, the Neolife shake, it doesn't, it doesn't increase sugar levels to the extent that would be unfavorable. So it's a good behavior choice from our point of view, and it brings about a, a very positive behavior design within the body. And then, of course, fiber, a typical part of our normal daily diet that should be there. Five grams might not sound a lot, but it's a pretty significant amount. It's 20 to 25 percent of your daily intake in one meal. And that's pretty difficult to achieve. And of course, um, what fiber is doing, I mean, for our, for our um, microbiome, those little microorganisms and bacteria are delighted to see fiber because what do they do? They ferment that fiber. And from that, they make other components that help to look after the quality of the cells in, in the gut, for example, that make energy, that work on our immune system and do all the sorts of things that the gut is supposed to do. And they, you have created a microbiome that's reset and ready it's ready to roll. It's ready to have all the right things. So we're giving it all the right foods. And this fiber is definitely serving the purposes of our microbiome. But what it's also doing is it slows down the digestive process. So our sugar levels, again, are controlled. And it makes us feel fuller. So it helps to, again, be a, a, in a meal that is very advantageous um, for our weight management as well as just daily nutrition. And, of course, low in kilojoules because the fat content is virtually nil. So we are having a, we are managing to have our calorie or kilojoule deficit, but with all the other goodness. And there isn't another food that's going to come alongside that with all these features, as well as be low in kilojoules and provide the protein quantity. And you've even got a multivitamin and mineral thrown in, 25 different vitamins and minerals. And this is important because as you reduce your food intake and your portion sizes, and perhaps, some, perhaps even some of the variety, you are going to have some little gaps here and there. You are going to perhaps take a little bit less in of some than you might have taken before, or perhaps very little of another one. And so to have these vitamins and minerals is extremely important in this meal. And I, and I think really, I've said this before, but I would challenge anyone actually to put this quality of protein, the type of carbohydrate chosen, that amount of fiber that isn't low, that is low in fat and low in kilojoules with 25 different vitamins and minerals on a plate for one meal, because this is just one meal. Um, it's difficult to achieve this in a day. Um, so this is quite an amazing meal in a glass, as it were. And what's more, no artificial colors, no artificial flavors, no artificial sweetness, no preservatives, almost unheard of um, in, in the food that we actually get given to us in this Western diet that we eat. So this is quite, a, I mean, uh, this excites me a lot, this product, I mean, I love it. You know, in this, right now, in this really hot weather that we're having, there's nothing more refreshing when you don't really feel like a big meal and you just simply put a shake together, shake it up with some really cold water and some ice cubes. It is a delicious refresher. And look how good it is for you. And what's more, it takes, I think, just less than one minute to make if you're just going to shake it up so quick. That is how convenient it is. It's, you know, the fastest fast food in town, as they say. And another thing that you've got that your your know, now shake is actually on your side is that load shedding doesn't have to dictate when you're hungry and when you can eat because you can just shake it up doesn't require any electricity and doesn't have any milk necessarily you can add milk if you want but it's it comes together very nicely with cold water so this is a real plus and a very easy thing to do if you're wanting to change some of your habits make a good behavior choice so that your body can make positive behavioral choices for you with you and of course, it comes in three delicious flavors. So you've got some variety there. And we, you know, we can use this just in the weight program, the weight loss program, we can use this twice a day to replace meals. But in your everyday use, even once a day, for all those benefits, it's something that should be factored into your, into your lifestyle, into your pattern, into your budget. And start to look at the things that you're wasting your money on in terms of snacks and biscuits and things. And start to focus on what it is that you're getting from a meal in a glass like Neo Life Shape. And one of Todd Miller's favorites, it seems. 
Yeah, so just, just in a sort of a little quick summary, this meal in a glass is going to help you build muscle. That's exactly what we want to do. We want to increase our mean muscle tissue so that our body our metabolism is much more efficient. Remember, it's the, it's the pivotal thing that will keep our body burning calories, even though you're taking in less calories. Your behavior choice is going to change the behavior of the body because it's now realizing it's got enough protein, it's got enough muscle tissue, it can behave in a different way. It controls sugar cravings because, as I said, it doesn't spike the sugar, doesn't pick you up and drop you down. You manage to ma maintain a stable sugar environment in your blood sugar levels. Fiber helps you to feel fuller for longer. So can you start to see how this is actually helping towards losing weight um, in, in, in very limited amount of effort that you have to put in? And again, because the product has been tested, as I said, it's been tested to control the sugar cravings. It's been tested in terms of its protein score. And in fact, in those tests which we did, we found results where people actually did lose weight. So that was one of the test criteria. They actually lost body fat in quite high percentages. We've actually got all those results for you, should you be interested. And all of that is already established and published. And within that test, we also found that it regulated people's cholesterol. And that kind of makes sense because fiber helps to do that. So most of us are not getting adequate amounts of fiber. So five grams is a significant contribution. And it helped to regulate total cholesterol. It lowered it in, in, in the subjects that were involved in this, in, in this research. And it lowered the LDL cholesterol, which is the least desirable one, but didn't interfere with the, the HDL, which is the preferable cholesterol to have. So it has many, many positive features. And as I say, you can use it as a, a delicious meal replacement. Um, or even have it in place of one of your snacks that you would normally have. It doesn't mean it's very low in kilojoules, and I can almost guarantee it's probably lower than the snacks that you're actually eating. So it, for all that benefit there, it's probably worth even having as a snack in your daily intake. Right, so that's the, the protein side, and I hope that's made sense in terms of helping you to increase your metabolism, still reduce your, kil your kilojoule intake, and have the body working you know, on your behalf rather than having by design to have to to work on your survival. It's now working on your behalf to say, come on, we can do this. We're going to control the, the, the lean tissue. We're going to get the composition right. We're going to make sure that the fat gets used as a source of energy. We're going to burn more calories and work in your favor. And then, of course, what do we want to do? We're taking in slightly less calories. We want to make sure that we can literally squeeze all the nutrients out of everything that we're eating, including the enough shape. You know, our cells, what do we do? We, we swallow food, it gets digested. It gets absorbed, it gets circulated in the bloodstream. And ultimately, when it's broken down to all its component parts, it has to get assimilated into a cell, into all our cells. Some will be needed for different parts of the body. And of course, we are made of trillions of cells. And we need to make sure that they are receptive and able to now receive these nutrients we've been talking about. And of course, many, many years ago, again, our scientific advisory board being quite visionary, started to recognize that our staple foods, you know, whether they be wheat, whether they be rice, different parts of the world have different staple foods, were actually being processed, stripped of their, all their nutrients. You know, when food was growing, it has oils and fiber and various vitamins, but in order to give it a shelf life, a lot of that was starting to be removed. And in the refining process and our simple carbohydrates, as we call them, we've lost some of that, those natural substances. And one of those important things is we've lost some of the oils, what we call lipids and sterols, that are found in, let's say, wheat and rice and soya. And so our scientists said, okay, what, what are the implications of that? And we realized that that cell membrane, that you've got that little green um, cell with a, with a black circle, that's the membrane, the circle. That's actually made up of protein. So that's why it's important that we have it. And it also has a double layer of oils and fats so that it can be malleable, fluid, receptive, responsive, communicative. So it can actually talk to all the other trillions of cells that are in the body and that are collectively making up one or other organ at the time. And there we have to know that that cell is able to receive the nutrients that we get. So we swallow these things, do they actually get into the cell? And if the food industry has removed some of those crucial oils that that cell, cell membrane depends on, it doesn't always guarantee that those nutrients are actually going to get inside the cell so that the cell can make energy and make every cell in the body more energetic. So they decided, right, well, we're going to go to those foods and we're going to take those oils that have been turfed out 
and we're going to encapsulate them, just have them in a different delivery form. Simply, you know, just like that meal in a glass, it's a different delivery form. That's all it is. It has all the nutrient value that a plate of food should have, but simply in a glass. And here we've taken those, those exact oils that have been removed from the food, from our food, the natural foods as they grow, and we've put them in a capsule. And we've called it tree and end because that means three in one. So we went to wheat, to rice, and to soya because we sell the products all over the world. And we encapsulated those oils and brought them back into the diet. So if we wanted to look at it, what is it actually happening now? We're getting those nutrients getting into the cell. The cell can now make its own energy. So it can do its own job. Plus it has energy to make whatever it needs to produce that can then be exported to some other part of the body. And so if every cell in our body is getting the nutrients it needs because the cell membrane is working properly, we are going to start working properly. And we're going to be naturally more energetic and vital, even without really realizing why. It doesn't mean we have to be sick in order to take these things. We want our bodies to work properly so that our behavioral choices make our body's behavior by design absolutely perfect and in harmony with what it is we're trying to achieve. So training should be part of everybody's everyday intake. A, just to get basic good working cells so we can make energy and get on with our lives and feel good and energetic and vital, but also to ensure that if we're taking in less calories, that whatever we're getting from those foods that we're taking in, we're going to squeeze out all the nutrients we can and ensure that they get in those cells so that our bodies will still work efficiently for us, even though we're actually creating a calorie deficit. And that's kind of really what we're doing here. Lipids and sterols, that's what I was talking about. Again, the product has been researched. We're not just talking about the fact that it works. The results of some research that we did actually showed that when tree and N is put in with the diet, compared to one that didn't have the, the tree and N, the potential for nutrient utilization increased by up to 50% because those oils were present. So those cells were delighted to see that oil and they responded to the food that was around them and took in those nutrients. So we do support at the cellular health, cellular level, naturally increases energy. And of course, we will feel much more energetic and vital. So tree and N is a product for everybody. And as I say, none of these products are required. We don't have to be sick to take good nutrition. It prevents us from feeling sick or getting sick because we give, we have good behavior choices and our body makes good choices behavior wise by design because we give them the right things to do the right thing. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. Neo Life Shake and Trianin. I think it's a very good combo, something that everybody can take on a daily basis. And this follows on very well from your detox program because. As Connie said, we've got to feed that microbiome now. And in fact, Neo Life Shake comes in on day three as a good quality protein, as a start to actually reintroducing good quality food. So it all dovetails perfectly with your detox program and your continuing health until you do your next detox. So make sure that you get your diary out, that you've already diarized at least your first one, and make sure that every quarter that you're diarizing it and you've got a whole lot of good product in that box that you get enough to have quite a few different detoxes, enough to share with your team or with others. Um, you get a nice little booklet as, as, as Drew was actually saying, and put it in a nice little vitamin chest. We used to have one of those available. And if they haven't got one there, you can get your own. And that way you can actually decant all the products ready for that two to three days that you need to, to be on spot and, and you know do your little detox with all the right products in the, in the right places. It's very easy to do and very, very effective. So I hope that you're going to get your diaries out and set yourself up for an amazing 2023. So yeah, I hope that we, mm. Connie and I, have helped you make your health and wellness and vitality a priority in 2023. We know it's very important. You know it's important. And I think you've now got the tools to go ahead and have a, a happy and healthy year. So thanks very much. Wow. Thank you so much, Liz. Wasn't that incredible? Amazing. And, and what I love about it is, let me just stop the sharing, is it's the simplicity. The simplicity of it, Liz, where, you know, number one, eat more intentionally. Stop eating so much bad stuff, eat, eat better stuff. Get active, get some exercise. Everybody has to be on training. 
Like really everybody has to be on training. And for all those reasons you discussed, that is the basis that gets your cells activated, that gets your, unlocks your cellular membranes, that gets the cells doing what they have to do. And then if you want to manage your weight, get onto the shake. To you know, If you want to, a healthy st- snack, get onto the shake. A healthy meal replacement, get onto the shake. If you want to, if you need the protein to give yourself a better muscle mass, use the shake. It's just those few pro- products are so, so simple. And then we bring that detox into it. You know, anybody who wants to increase their energy in 2023, anybody who wants to slow down the aging process, anybody who wants to kickstart a weight management or weight loss program, anybody who feels they need to boost their immunity, Anybody who wants to remove toxins from their body. Sounds like you need a detox. And so those products just incorporate so many health and and wellness challenges that we have. And so I just want to, first of all, thank you. Thank Connie and Liz for just the exceptional information uh, they shared with us this evening. I want to thank all of you who joined us on this call. Tonight we spoke to over 450 people. and so here's the challenge. Um, this is information. So first and foremost, please take this information and implement it into your life. If you are a guest on the call, get in touch with the person who, who invited you onto this call. Get your questions answered. Get them to organize you the products or link up with the, this Neil Life family and get onto the product so you and your family can benefit. But I'm going to extend a request or I'm going to ask a favor from every single person on this call. There are people all around us. There's people that we care about. There's people that we love that have health goals that they're running towards. They have health challenges that they're trying to overcome and they need this information in their lives. They need these products in their lives, but they've never heard the word near life before. And so I'm going to ask you to extend a hand of love and a hand of friendship and reach out to them and say, hey, I've got something which I think could be good for you, could help you achieve that that health goal you've set for the year, could help you overcome that health challenge you've been struggling with, that's been frustrating you, that's been keeping you from getting what you truly deserve. And so we will make this recording available. We'll send it out to our, our Neil Life distributors who will share this with you and far and wide. So I want to just end off by saying thank you so much for joining us. I pray this, that this information is not only good information, but it's information that you implement into your life and extend to other people. God bless you all. Have a fantastic week. Bye.